The Lord be with you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to worship wherever you may be gathered. I'm out uh, visiting the um, outdoor worship space of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church at Lions Hillside Park today. As we enter into this day, we enter into the second Sunday after Pentecost and continue our journey at the beginning stages of our time through this season called Pentecost or ordinary time. It's a time that is the longest season of the church's year and a time that gives us many opportunities to share in the stories of the disciples journey with Jesus. And so today is no different than that. As Pastor Bob offers the sermon today, Pastor Julie leads us in worship. Again, wherever you may be gathered today, thank you for joining us in Good Shepherd's digital community. And um, let's prepare ourselves for worship now. We gather for worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Here in this place the new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space our fears and our dreamings Brought here to you in the light of this day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Mm -hmm. 
Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. We gather this day with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. May it be with you all and also, also with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray our prayer of this day. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour, Pour your love, love into our hearts, hearts that, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your, of your realm, realm and, and faithfully, faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son. Son. Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior and, Lord. and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I am so glad um, that you're able to join us today on this beautiful Sunday morning. So I have a quick question for you. Um, what do you do um, when mom and dad ask you to clean your room, but when you go to open your door, you realize how messy your room actually is? Like you look around and it is so messy, you are overwhelmed and don't even know where to start. What do you do? What do you do when you're feeling so overwhelmed you don't know where to start? First thing I would do is ask for help. 
I'd ask mom and dad to help me start or give me some ideas on what I should do, right? You ask for help. That's what we do when we're overwhelmed. So our Bible story today is um, kind of goes along um, with that question. You'll find the story in the book of Matthew. And we hear about Jesus sharing God's love, which he did all the time. Um, and people were starting to gather anywhere Jesus was to hear about God's amazing love. <clears throat> and the crowds, every time Jesus was around, the crowds just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And people were coming who were hungry because they, they knew Jesus would feed them. People were coming when they were sick because they knew that Jesus would heal them. The crowds just kept getting bigger and bigger and Jesus started to get really overwhelmed. He started to look at all these crowds and wonder how in the world am I going to help all of these people guess what he did he looked at his 12 disciples and he asked for help he said to his disciples you need to go out and make friends and share God's love with everybody that is listening to you so then they can go out and share God's love with other people as well and then pretty soon we have all these people that are going out and sharing God's love and God's love is being spread more and more and more the amazing thing about this whole story, boys and girls, is God chose ordinary people like you and like me to do his work, to go out and share his love. God has faith in all of us that we can do that. He trusts us to go out and share his love. And when we're sharing his love with others, it gives others hope as well. So do you remember last week when I asked you to stop what you were doing and go and find somebody in your house and share God's love with them? You remember that? Yep. So how amazing would it be then if that person that you shared God's love with went out and shared God's love with somebody else and then they shared God's love with somebody else and then they shared God's love with somebody else and pretty soon, just like the disciples, everyone is sharing God's love. Boys and girls, remember, God picked ordinary people like me and you to do his work, to go out and share his love with so many people. And so there's a song that I'm going to teach you today. A lot of you church school kids um, will remember this song the minute we start singing it. It's all about faith because God has faith in us. Um, it's all about love because he wants us to go out and share his love. And it's all about hope because when we are sharing his love, it's giving others hope. So it's about um, faith, hope, and love. I'm going to ask my very best friend, Ashley, to come in. She's never um, sang this song before. You so can't gonna... lie. We tried it. You taught me it the last round but then you laughed and so we had to do a new video we had to stop and this is so i have learned it once but i'm still not i'm not an expert like the church school mm -hmm. kids but this is take two yes the church school kids know this very very well um so remember we sing faith 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 that's what it's all about because god loves us we love each other mother father sister brother everybody sing and shout because that's what it's all about so we'll start with faith then we'll move on to hope and then we go on to love. And I have a hard time with it because I want to add some stuff, but I'll, I'll try to do my best. Okay, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. All right, we start with faith. Okay. Here we go. Faith, faith, faith. That's what it's all about. Because God Everybody loves us. We love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. Everybody scream and shout. Because that's what it's all about. It's about faith, faith, faith. It's about faith, faith, faith. I got it right. Hope, hope, hope. It's about, that's what it's all about. Because God loves us. We love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. And everybody sing and shout. Because that's what it's all about. It's about hope, hope, hope. It's about hope, hope, hope. Love, love, love. love. That's what it's all about. Because God loves us. We love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother. Everybody sing and shout. Cause that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. love it's about love, love, love. Boom, ba -doom, boom, boom, boom. it. Yes. I hope you were singing at home. Yes. Thank you yes, for I, teaching me. Yes, I hope you're all singing at home. And why don't you, those of you who know this song, um, share it with those in the house. We would love to see videos of you singing this yes. song. That would be amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's close in prayer. Good and great God, thank you for choosing us, ordinary people, to go out and do your work. 
Thank you for having faith in us to share your love with everyone around us. In your loving name, all God's children say, amen. Amen. Have a fabulous week, everyone. Thank you so much. Faith, faith, faith. It's about faith, faith, faith. I'm just waiting for the end to come. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 through 8. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possessions out of all the peoples indeed, of all the peoples indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words uh, that you can, shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came down, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words, and the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one. Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of, in, of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The New Testament reading is in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in the sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappear, disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Through, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us. In the while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. 
When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Brothers and sisters, grace to and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Well, hey everybody. I kind of feel like it's been a while since we've been together, since we've talked. Um, So much has been happening lately in our world that it feels like we're spinning faster and faster and faster. And I would love it if we could all just take a deep breath and breathe in the Holy Spirit and just listen to God's voice for a while. I think it would do us some good to listen to the voice of the one that loves us more than anything and the one that gives us all that we need and more. This text for today speaks to that as we hear our shepherd's voice tell us that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I mean, lately I've been doing some things in my world and experiencing some things that really bring this verse to life. As I started to think about this, I was sitting in my sub, my lovely suburban, watching my brother from another mother, Kevin, go around and around and put wheat in the ground. He's a farmer, lives and works north of Ross, North Dakota, and I spent a few days basically just keeping him going. It was a lot of sit and wait time, and I had time to think about this text and just what a plentiful harvest might mean. Also, a question arose in my head, right? Who set up this harvest? I mean, as I watched Kevin go round and round and around, it was obvious where the harvest that he was putting in was going to come from. He was setting up a harvest. Getting to that conclusion is the easy part. I mean, planting the harvest is hard. And for those of you that know farming, and I am not admittedly among you, you know what's involved in getting a crop in. There's a lot to it. There's a whole bunch of science going on. There's a whole bunch of mechanical knowledge involved, not to mention the muscle memory dexterity that it takes to control that seeding and fertilizing apparatus. And Let us not forget the inherent danger that's involved with hauling around a tank full of poison. And let me tell you, as you watch and and wait and watch somebody planting a crop, you quickly find out that you don't want to be downwind of that little field train. Ammonia is tough stuff. Kevin made it look easy, and I know it's not. It's a bunch of exhausting work, but he made it look like just another day at the office. We seeded a you know, several hundred acres in the time I was there. That's going to be a plentiful harvest, God willing. Kevin has done the hard work of putting a crop in and will tend to it over the summer in order to get to that plentiful harvest. This is how it is all around us in our tiny little corner of the world as farmers do the hard work of setting up a harvest that feeds so many. The harvest is plentiful. So shortly after I got done with helping Kevin, I went on a week-long canoe trip into the Boundary Waters with Peter, 
and I saw a different view of the harvest. Now, I will have to admit that I much prefer a river canoe experience. I'm not a huge fan of the portage experience. But anyway, if you've ever been to the Boundary Waters, or if you've never been to the Boundary Waters, I highly recommend it. The beauty of that area is stunning and spellbinding. The flora and fauna are so engaging that you forget everything else for a while. The noise of nature is soothing. The sound of wind through the trees, loons singing and screeching. Who knew that a loon sounds like an eagle? Beavers slapping the water and the distant howl of wolves all serve to capture the imagination. In the midst of all of that silent noise, there is a plentiful harvest. Now, at first, it might seem a bit counterintuitive to think of the BWCA as a plentiful harvest place, but as I sat and listened and watched, I realized that there is indeed a plentiful harvest. There is more than we need all around us. We had all the wood we needed for fires of warmth and cooking. There were fish to be had at a few of our meals. There were animals all around that were well taken care of as their shepherding God will take care of them. The forest is full of provision for all who live in it and experience it. We even have the wind at our backs now and again to push us along and conserve our energy. It all served to provide us with pretty much everything we needed and more. This harvest, compared to the one that Kevin started, was not set up by humans. This harvest is given by God. In both of these cases, there are laborers. Farming, it's easy to see. Kevin and those that farm with him are the laborers. That's a bit of a no-brainer. I may have to be uh, among those laborers later this year as I go up and help him with that harvest that we put in. We'll see. May have to look a bit harder for the laborers in the wilderness. Every now and again, there were other canoers coming by. But the animals around us were probably the laborers in the woods. At least that's what the squirrels seemed to want to remind us of as they chattered in the trees at our intrusion into their harvest. As Peter and I were driving back home, the reality of what was going on when we were out in this creation hit us hard. Our world is hurting. People are hurting. The laborers are struggling with society and each other. I usually try and stay away from too much opining about the current state of the world vis-a-vis -vis politics, but I'm not sure I can make that work in light of a text that seems to tell us that Jesus is calling us into a harvest. There is little possibility of ignoring what we were just talking about when it comes to the current state of things. So give me some room here to tell you what's in my head as Jesus calls me to the harvest. We live in a world that is increasingly becoming an us versus them type of place. The trouble with that is that in God's vision of his creation, there are no us and no them. There are only the children of God. We are all God's children, no matter what our color, our politics, our sexual orientation, our race, our creed, or any other label that we can come up with in order to create separation. God is about unity. The Bible speaks about that constantly. Paul talks at length about the fact that we are all one body. Jesus talks about gathering God's children together as a hen gathers her chicks. Even when we get to Revelation, the picture of the end of it all is a picture of God gathering all to him. We cannot escape the fact that God wants us to all be one. So I can't understand the want of a society to separate. I do not understand pretty much any kind of ism. An ism automatically implies separation. God is not about any kind of ism. When Jesus talks about this plentiful harvest that is before us and the fact that the laborers are few, he is inviting us into the unity of a harvest that is for all. We are, we are not getting to that. As we look around at a society that is tearing itself apart, I think that God is crying. He set a table before us and our cup overflows and we're missing it. There is so much in our world to be thankful for and we're missing it. We cannot in, in ignore the injustices that are going on in our world. We can't, but we have to face it. The way that we do that, in my humble opinion, is to look 
at the stories that make up each of our lives as that harvest. We all have a story to tell that shaped who we are and how we see the world. The inviting of the story and the telling of the story is how we move toward a harvest of understanding. This is, I think, the only way that we can move toward unity. We all have lives to share. Share them. Invite the sharing and then listen with compassion and respect and wonder as the story unfolds and the harvest of the wilderness comes in. Micah 6.8 tells us what God wants from us. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? There it is. If you combine that with Jesus telling you that when you love God with all you've got and you love your neighbor as yourself, everything else will fall into line, then you can start to see what a plentiful harvest looks like. God has given us all his creation, his gift to care for. That means that all the little grains of wheat All the yards and parks, all the people, all the wilderness, all the squirrels. That means all people, not just some. Please see that. All of the people that you encounter every day, whether in person or on any kind of social media, they are your harvest. They need the Jesus in you. You need the Jesus in them. Ask, tell, listen, share. Do it all with respect and compassion. Breathe in the harvest. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know? or scare will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me will you love the you you hide if I but call your name will you quell the fear inside and never be the same will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me Lord your summons echoes true when you but call my name let me turn and follow you never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Let us confess together the faith that we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is is seated at the the right right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we were taught the other day, you can sign the peace. Peace be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Share the peace with those of you who are gathered with you this day. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Who is it that you present for baptism? Name this little guy. Sawyer, as you bring Sawyer to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that Sawyer may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others and the world God made and work for justice and peace. You promise to help Sawyer grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say I do. Awesome. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Sawyer in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say I do. All right. People of God, that's you two. You guys, right? Do you promise to support Sawyer and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say we do. Awesome. I ask all of you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say I do. All right. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. All right. I'm going to bring Sawyer around the front here. Sawyer Blake, we're going to get you wet, buddy. I know. It's going to be okay. He's going to love this. Sawyer Blake, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll give you this. It doesn't drip down into his eyes. There you go. Don't go too far. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Sawyer with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Sawyer Blake Hurts, child of God, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever.
In Matthew's Gospel, we hear that we're to let our light so shine before others that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. That's what this candle is for. So you, you can light this candle on this day every year to remember the fact that little Sawyer, I'll give that to you, has been claimed by God, washed clean in the waters of baptism, and there is nothing anyone anywhere can ever do to get in the way of that, which is pretty awesome. Through baptism, God has made this new little brother a partner in the ministry we all share in Jesus Christ, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creating, creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow partner in Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. Let's give him a round of applause. Yay, Sawyer! <laughs> that smile. You can blow that up. We have, usually we do a baby walk and there's Jesus loves me and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, it's social distancing. So I'm going to let you hold this. This is a box for that candle. It's got a place where you can write all of today's information on it so you can keep record of that. Here's certificates for everybody, for sponsors and for Sawyer. There's a first Bible in there, the nice thick cardboard pages so he can chew on it. There's a book that talks a lot about how we Lutherans think of baptism and then a quilt from our quilting ministry so he can know that he is wrapped in the Good Shepherd's love and this Good Shepherd's love for all of his life. Amazing. Thank you, and God bless all of you. So at this point in our worship service, we gather together and give thanks for all the gifts that God has first given to us in order for us to use them to be a blessing to God's children. It's the gifts of our hands, our feet, our financial resources, and our voices that allow God's good work to happen in and through our congregation, through one another, into our world. And so we give thanks for the many ways that, that continues to happen. I give thanks for the many ways that you supported the work of Ministry on the Margins this past week as we were able to host three families. I give thanks for the many ways that nearly a hundred of you are participating in our summer small group session called ABC, or Adult Bible in Catechism. Thank you for doing that. I give thanks for the many ways that we've been able to change directions and pivot a little bit in this time, and we'll have uh, multiple youth mission work and mission trips happening this summer that are very different from what we had planned, but are going to be a great blessing, not only to the youth and adults that lead them, but also to those they get to serve. I also give thanks for the many ways that we continue to partner with other local agencies and ministries in our community like Heaven's Helpers Soup Cafe or the Sunrise Homeless Shelter, just to name a few. Brothers and sisters, know that your gifts are a blessing to continue to allow God's good work through Good Shepherd to be strong in these days and to continue to be strong long after COVID-19 is over. I ask you to keep in prayer this week as well, your church council. They will be meeting again on Tuesday evening, and um, the purpose or primary purpose of, of their work together in meeting will be twofold. One is to look at a, uh, take another look at our long range uh, facility plan, improvement plan that we've been working on for the last almost four years now, and did some concerted work on it in the first quarter before COVID hit. And so we're gonna re take a, a new look at that with new lens, uh, new lenses. Uh, the second piece the council is going to be working pretty diligently on this week is to take a look at where we are regarding in-person worship at Good Shepherd. I've been grateful for the many ways that you've joined us for worship on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the Shepherd's Table that meets at 1210 in our sanctuary, as well as meeting in this outdoor, beautiful outdoor worship space at Hillside Park on Wednesday nights at 630. But council is going to take into consideration now what does it look like in the month of July to actually begin meeting on weekends um, in the sanctuary? And so we'll keep that in your prayer. And if you have any insights on that that you'd like to share with your council, I know that they would love to hear from you. Finally, I'm wearing a baseball cap from the Bismarck Larks last season because this coming week is an exciting time where baseball returns to our community. It's already begun in earnest with some of the high school programs. Um, and it's going to be a blessing to sit and watch some baseball outside this week for a couple of nights. Wendy and I are really looking forward to that. Again, thanks for being with us today in worship wherever you may be. You are a blessing to Good Shepherd. You are a blessing to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's continue our time with worship in a song of thanksgiving.
is called to baptize, we witness to grace and gather a people from each land and race. In deep flowing waters we share in Christ's death, then rising to new life, give thanks with each breath. In Christ called to banquet, one table we share, a haven of welcome, a circle of care. Although we are many, we share in one bread, one cup of thanksgiving proclaims Christ our head. In Christ called to witness, by grace we will preach, the life-giving gospel, God's love we will teach. By grace may our living give proof to our praise, in costly compassion reflecting Christ's ways. Unite us, anoint us, O Spirit of love, for you are within us, around us, above. Equip us for service with gifts you bestow. In Christ is our calling, in Christ may we grow. We lift to God our prayers this day. Gathered by the Holy Spirit into one community of faith, we pray for the church, our communities, and all who are in need. Holy and loving God, we ask that you inspire all your children to live in unity. Build up our respect and curiosity to wonder with each other and ask each other for their stories. We know that we all have history and that our history is what forms us. Help us to know that our histories start and end in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are in the grips of violence and hate. We know that our world is in turmoil. We know that many of our brothers and sisters are experiencing a very stressful time. Bring your sense of calm into our lives and open our eyes to see the plentiful harvest of peace that is right before us, there for the taking. Gather us together in that harvest of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we pray today, we pray for any and all who are suffering. We pray for those who are sick and broken. We pray for those in hospitals and long-term care facilities. We pray for those that battle addiction and mental illness. We pray for those that are in prisons of all kinds. Come to them and let them feel your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray, Lord, for all who are grieving the loss of relationships of all kinds. We lift to you those who have family members who have died. We lift to those who are grieving the loss of a beloved pet or a dream. Remind us all that there is a promise, one through the death and resurrection of Jesus, that we will all be together again someday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy 
kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Christ the Lord of all.